The motor car. Millions of them. All sizes, but roughly the same shape. Loved and worshipped by some, even hated by a few. But if you turn your back, they won't go away. What does the motor car mean to us? Well, it's sometimes a source of leisure for the family. Or basic transport for busy mothers and kids. Other cars are used as workhorses around the clock. Or to go fast for the younger generation. And more slowly for the middle-aged. So, if motor cars are all things to all men and women, then a new car must be a whole lot more than a passing fancy, an impulsive purchase. This is the story of a new car, a new Ford car for the world to drive. It started over three years ago. And if all you drivers watch closely, you will see the part you played in this, because it was you who started the ball rolling. Let's begin by listening to some of the things you expect from a car. It makes a pretty impressive list. Um, seat belts, wide wheels, radial tyres, uh, servo-assisted disc brakes. Good back seats, good pack seats. It's very, very essential. Auf Wirtschaftlichkeit, guten Fahrkomfort und natürlich Sicherheit. Build capacity is a big must, especially when you go on holiday. Um, when I go on holiday with the family, we, I've got three children, we um, have everything with us, the deck chairs, the balls, the luggage cases. It's a must, a complete must. I bring every day my friend to work. Uh, that will say that five times per week do. And fahren Sie auch mit dem Auto zum Einkaufen? Two or three times in a week. Most of them Köln or Düsseldorf. Well, you know, it is uh, for me very simple as answer. I am with such a car, so for the middle class genre, very content. And the car is getting my full attention. It really does benefit to have a smooth, silky ride, good road holding, and good performance-wise from the vehicle. Then it's a Saturday night, and Sunday night, and well, with two little children, and then also the mother of my wife sometimes. Auf genügend Platz für die Familie und es soll natürlich nicht zu groß sein. Positive steering, good brakes. Economy is one of the uh, the most important things I've got to take into consideration. But when Ford decided to replace the highly successful Cortina range, they did a lot more homework than a mere hundred thousand interviews and five million questions. They carried out much more sophisticated research as well. In hotel rooms and private halls around the world, they invited a broad cross-section of the motoring public to walk around and look at a new car. There were no badges or nameplates on it, and so the people had no idea of the make, or even the country it came from. Ford questioned these people about the car, and about what they expect from a car, and some of the questions were pretty searching. The results of this research in depth, and of the 100,000 interviews, were then analysed by computer. What came out of the other end? Several million headaches for the designers and engineers. And for the product planners, the men whose job it was to coordinate the new car concept. Just as the Cortina was to be replaced in Britain, so was its equivalent in Germany. Ford top management agreed that the new cars should be developed by pooling the best brains and the best facilities in Europe. Designers and engineers got together from the start. They talked of timing, weight and cost effectiveness. They equated performance against design, ride and handling characteristics against suspension geometry. They looked long and hard at the growing legal and safety requirements throughout world markets. They got their teeth into a thousand problems, solved them and tackled a thousand more. Above all, they never lost sight of the likes and dislikes of the customer. Research had shown just how space conscious the modern motorist is. So planners and engineers linked up with designers to provide the first shape in the scheme. Full-size package layouts to study head and leg room, seating comfort, boot space, and the driver's relationship to control positions. 
Today's drivers want to feel plenty of air around them, that they have a large car inside and a medium-sized car outside. What we've got to make sure of now is that the headroom that we get inside here is uh, very close to our competition. Now we've got to be absolutely sure that that other competitive car um, that's in the showroom now, we'll get the mannequin in, uh, we'll get it seated in the correct location and we'll make a temperate from the back so that we get the exact condition in the head swing area. What we've got at the moment seems pretty good. Now if we check the, the actual inside contour against the 8 degree line a third dimension emerged with the building in clay of a number of full-size models and a lot of the interior appointments. Experiments have been made on many other substances, but clay is still preferred for its pliable nature, its flexibility in being so easy to make rapid changes to a design shape. With clay, modelers can change the shape almost as fast as designers can change their minds. But humble clay in the hands of craftsmen is transformed into finely executed detail that can be touched and looked at and appraised. Because the modern motorist spends more time in his car and demands a far higher degree of comfort, specially built frameworks called bucks were produced not only to give the designers the feel of their medium and to evaluate interior trim and seating, but also to measure the complex seat-to-pedal relationships with a metal man called Oscar. Boot capacity is a big must, especially when you go on holiday. Um, when I go on holiday with the family, we, I've got three children, we um, have everything with us, the deck chairs, the balls, the luggage, cases. It's a must, a complete must. No, not a finished prototype, but a good example of the attention to detail in the scheme. This is a full-size model built in fiberglass to enable top design executives to prove out fit and function, to allow the shape, the look, the aesthetics of design to be discussed and argued about. Points of detail, trim, mouldings, all these things can be seen as part of the whole. But as the scheme got underway, time became another master. Just like a moonshot, schedules began to exert their own particular pressures. Schedules that were the linchpin of the whole operation. For now, the approved clay models and sections became the very first source of measurement information. A mass of linear data ready for translation into detailed drawings as a step towards the manufacture of the first prototypes in England and Germany. Do that, you have to watch the thickness of the pipe. Uh, I think uh, all you need to do is uh, make a comparison of the spring size pitch on the seat with the uh, uh, We could get a spring rate test done on it. With blueprints, bulging briefcases, and even boxes of oily components, the men engaged on the project commuted into each other's offices and workshops. Seven day a week traffic between Essex and the Rhineland. The bridge between these men, their ideas and their problems intensified. Company aircraft became extensions of the office and the conference room as the endless discussions and meetings continued. Some problems were solved at a height of 15,000 feet. Now, constant use was made of the new quality dictionary, EGPAS. Full title, European General Product Acceptance Specification. This laid down a series of design, performance and durability standards for the entire project. Engineering drawings in English and German came into their own, and the very first prototype bodies began to take shape, section by section. As the huge body program gathered momentum, a massive amount of precise and detailed engineering 
was already underway on the new car's chassis and mechanical sections. Five degree rock. Five degree angle from the inertia roof. 185 by 13, we've got a 20 millimetre clearance to the hood line. I think the customer today is looking for a low, sleeky car that holds the road far much better than uh, the usual old-fashioned box-type car. From the maximum chance of 90. We can't uh, tip it over on an angle because the pendulum doesn't work. In the engine build workshops, one machine costing close to a million pounds worked under numerical control as it performed the dozens of automatic functions to produce the prototype engine blocks required for the program. Under the surface of paraffin, the Sparkatron machine bombarded already tempered metal to produce diamond hard exotic shapes for the gear trains. elements of the prototypes began to appear, a huge testing program got underway. In refined laboratory areas in England and Germany, every component, each piece of the body, all working parts were twisted, distorted and tortured around the clock on test rigs. These special machines were built only to stress and test the thousands of components that make up the modern car, day in, day out, for months on end, as a key date in the schedule drew near. All the pieces have been put together and for the first time there is a chance to see the result in tangible shape. The first of the prototypes. Top Ford executives now help to prove the first prototypes in alpine conditions helped to prove in high altitudes braking systems developed under their supervision. These men were involved in all aspects from day one, and they continued to be involved and committed to the prototypes throughout every stage.
And while the cars were in the mountains, in over 50 dynamometer cells in Essex, engine tests were still being carried out on the whole new range of overhead camshaft engines as refinements and modifications were approved. Modern driving conditions, seeing is safety. Good all-round visibility is essential. A quieter part of the testing program was in the visibility room, where the original design was checked and confirmed. Complicated vibration tests were set up to stress the prototype, while delicate instruments recorded and assessed the efficiency of each separate part. Motor start. Motor line. Another complete prototype was set up in a wind tunnel to undergo a series of tests at wind speeds, well in excess of anything the final cars will have to face. With its rear wheels running on rollers, the prototype was subjected to anything from a scorching desert wind to a freezing Arctic gale. A major requirement of the whole project from the start had been to produce a quieter car. Because of this, in a specially designed anechoic chamber, the vehicle was run on a road simulator. Every known surface condition was fed in by tapes, while sound engineers recorded and plotted sound levels from a mass of microphones. cars must satisfy owners in the northern hemisphere as well as in the rest of the world. So other prototypes were set to start and run in cold rooms where controlled temperatures stood at 35 degrees below zero. Prototypes had also to be proved out in Arctic conditions by teams of drivers backed up by sophisticated instruments who knew how and where to search for any hidden weaknesses. concerned for its environment, and air pollution is a word we are hearing more and more. Legal requirements on exhaust emission are continually tightening, and were high on the priority list of this program.
Ford tape recorded the worst roads in the world to reproduce under laboratory conditions prototype suspension tests. Only the toughest of roads can lead to the best suspension. And the suspension geometry of this new car is one of the most important aspects of the entire concept. In Germany, a vital part of the research and engineering headquarters is a very comprehensive test track. Here, engineers can drive a prototype straight from the laboratory, run a series of really punishing tests, and be back within minutes to examine the results. Safety by accident avoidance and injury reduction was a factor of total involvement. Safety engineers worked on the project from the beginning, linking with designers, engineers and planners, deliberately smashing costly prototypes to assess, measure and prove out safety factors inherent in the design. But endless mechanical tests are a barren thing without the long and final stages of the prototype's life, as a real car on real roads. Not just straight runs on tarmac, but tens of thousands of miles on the most comprehensive test tracks in the world, including the Ford Proving Ground at Lommel in Belgium, a vast man-made complex that creates every known surface and condition that today's family car market demands to put to the test all that design and engineering has produced. A sophisticated, highly refined product of the best brands and best facilities of Britain and Germany. These are prototypes now destined for production, designed to replace the most successful British car ever, the Cortina. A new Cortina, Ford's answer to five million questions. I think the customer today is looking for a low, sleepy car that holds the road. High top speed, nice cruising speeds. The seat comfort's important. All round visibility. Positive steering. Good road holding. Thoroughly reliable. Quiet in the driving seat. Full capacity. Good brakes.
new Cortina brings motoring to a new peak. That's what it says in the adverts, that's what it says on the posters, and it's no idle boast. It's a claim that's more than substantiated by the sheet metal. For this new Cortina really does scale the heights and set new standards of performance, of roadability, of comfort, of choice, of capacity, of sophistication, of style, of value for money, and last but certainly not least, in safety. Let's take a look at Ford's new middleweight challenger for the 70s. And let's remember that whatever our rivals throw into the ring, home or abroad, they can't give us a hard time that the real rival gave us. For the car we had to beat was the old Cortina. And let's remember that when the first Cortina entered the showrooms in 1962, it set a new standard and created a totally new class of car. The Cortina started a new motoring philosophy that put the ordinary family motorist right where the action was in a car that satisfied all his needs. Space, economy, durability were married to a trend-setting modern style and right through the 60s customers courted the Cortina to satisfy their urge for practical motoring with a zest. Trophies from the track were more than matched by a market performance that made Cortina a seven-figure selling sensation. From Budapest to Birmingham, phenomenal success earned Cortina an internationally recognized pedigree that grew stronger as debris evolved and offered even more to a discerning and value-hungry public. The record speaks for itself, but the future presented a challenge to Ford to move into the 70s with a Cortina of the 70s, with a brand new car that raises the standards of family motoring to a new peak of excellence. This is the GXL, top of the new Cortina range. Its modern prestige styling has performance to match, combining good looks with a new peak of engineering refinement. The wide low appearance is no illusion. The smooth sculptured shape and the steeply raked windscreen reduce wind resistance and noise to a minimum. Front track is three and a half inches wider and the roof nearly three inches lower. No increase in length, but with the long wheelbase and the rear track five inches wider, there's exceptional stability and road behavior. A totally refined suspension has improved the handling and helped to cut down noise even on the roughest surfaces. In front, there's the familiar motor racing combination of coil springs and wishbones with the short and long arms on a rubber-mounted subframe to insulate the driver from vibration. There's another racy formula at the rear. Coil springs and a rigid axle now located by four bar links which virtually eliminate axle tramp even under extreme driving conditions and reflect Ford's determination to pass on their experience in rallying and racing to the family motorist. To look at, the Cortina is the most exciting new family car for years. In both the two-door and four-door versions, the new shape has a low waistline and an exceptionally large glass area which gives outstanding all-round visibility. And not only can you see out, but other motorists can see through your car to the road ahead. Just one of the many safety features, like the well-positioned, easy-to-read instruments. Clock, speedometer and rev counter are standard on GT and GXL models. The Aeroflow vent has a new shape, and the oval sports steering wheel, of course, doesn't obscure the dials. The sporty centre console carries four smaller instruments, fuel, oil, temperature gauge and ammeter. The four-speed all-synchro mesh gearbox has the easy action and well-placed ratios that discerning drivers have come to expect from Cortinas. And the foot-controlled windscreen wash and wipe, which is standard on most models, adds another safety plus. Convenient, easy-to-use accelerator, brake and clutch pedals are designed for maximum driver comfort. And the multi-purpose steering column stalk provides fingertip control of the wraparound indicators, the headlamp flasher, dipper switch and horn. GT and GXL versions have twin halogen headlamps fitted as standard. All switches and controls are placed well within reach, including the heated rear window switch on the GXL. More knee room, hip room and shoulder room and seats that fit where it matters most are the main features of superb four or five seater comfort. Safety recessed door handles and flush window winders and an integral armrest fit into the prestige GXL trim that includes grab handles and sound absorbent pierced headlining. Between the front seats a handy armrest can map compartment and seat belts that fit into fixed position sockets so there's no more fumbling. The new GT combines sports car performance with the comfort and convenience of a saloon. 
Available as a two or four door, like the GXL, it is powered by a superb new overhead camshaft engine, which comes in 1600 or 2000 cc versions. A top speed of over 100 miles an hour and over 30 miles to the gallon are features of both versions. But the new Cortina that will sell more than any other is the Cortina L. This is the real family car, attractive, spacious, economic, yet fast enough to be exciting. The 1300cc overhead valve engine has been uprated to give a top speed of 85 miles an hour and a fuel consumption of 35.9 mpg. A 1600cc version has also been uprated. Circular headlamps and twin speed wipers are standard. The family boot is as big as ever, 12 fully usable cubic feet. With the new suspension, handling is exceptional and there are discs in front and drum brakes at the rear. But for real load carrying, the Cortina Estate is in a class of its own. 64 cubic feet of carrying space and a choice between both overhead valve engines and the 2000cc overhead camshaft unit. As on the saloon, a flush-fitting petrol cover, flush drip rails, a new door seal and recessed door handles are detailed refinements designed to cut down wind resistance and noise. Inside, drivers and passengers benefit from the new Cortina trim. Below the aeroflow vents, the deep glove compartment slopes away to give more room for the people as well as the parcels. There's a practical rubber floor covering and carpet and a parcel tray on the transmission tunnel. There's a choice of manual or automatic gear change, and for the first time the Cortina has the popular floor-mounted T-bar shift. Safety and comfort are big features of the new interior, with recessed door handles and flush-fitting winders, and seats that give support where you need it most. On the GT, the fully reclining, body-hugging rally-type seat has a standard built-in headrest. And on the Prestige GXL, seating refinement reaches a new peak with a choice of movements in every direction. Forward and backwards, a fully reclining backrest and easily operated adjustable height. There's an exciting new story under the bonnet. After five years of research and development, a brand new overhead camshaft engine designed for high performance with economy in 1600 and 2000 cc versions. A strong, flexible power unit with a five bearing crankshaft for smoothness and quietness. On all new Cortinas except the 1300, an alternator is standard equipment. And one of the most impressive safety features is the new dual line braking system, servo assisted on high performance models. Twin reservoirs hold a new brake fluid, which has an improved high boiling point. The twin lines are designed to make front and rear brakes independent of each other, as a double safety guarantee. Another strong safety feature is the steering. After being universally accepted as the best system for racing and rallying, rack and pinion steering is standard on all new Cortinas. It produces a light, positive feel and gives the driver exceptionally precise control of the car. The superb handling of the new Cortina can be traced to the new short and long arm suspension at the front with a three and a half inch wider track and the refinements at the rear where the rigid axle is now located by a four bar link and the track has been increased by no less than five inches. To cut down noise, the wiper motor and the blower have both been moved forward into the engine compartment and for winter motoring, there's a superbly simple twist to the air intake that will allow the engine to motor at an economic temperature. Above all, the new engine is remarkably easy to get at for servicing and maintenance. This is a car that really reaches a new peak of motoring excellence.
There's a new philosophy behind the new Cortina, and the best man to explain it is Ford of Britain sales director, Sam Toy. Mr Toy, the current Mark II Cortina, has not only helped Ford to achieve a million sales in England, but has given Ford the record of the fastest million export in British motoring history. So there's obviously one question, why do we need a new Cortina? Well, the answer is that you'll remain successful only if you stay ahead of the game. And uh, the reason for the new Cortina is that we want to be as far ahead of the game in the 70s as we were with the Mark I and Mark II Cortinas in the 60s. So what's so new about the new Cortina? Well, it's all completely new. Uh, we have a car that we believe from a style point of view, from a performance point of view, uh, all of the things that matter to the motorist. Um, we've produced in the new Cortina the things that are needed for the 70s. What were you looking for mainly with the new Cortina? I think we were looking for a car of no uh, greater size. For example, the new Cortina is exactly the same length as the old one. But we're looking for more package inside, in terms of room. Um, we were looking for a quieter vehicle. We were looking for more performance. We were looking for better road holding. All the things that keep you ahead of the game. How important is the introduction of a new Cortina, not only to the world's markets, but to the world's motorists? Well, I think it's vital because, first of all, in terms of the size of vehicle, which world markets, and this is particularly true in the United Kingdom, are asking for, is this Cortina size? It's vital also because within the size of vehicle that we've produced, uh, with the new Cortina, we're introducing a breadth of range to take care of everything from the deluxe version right through to uh, the top specification that's required by the customer in our GXL range. And then finally, from our point of view, that is to say within the Ford family, uh, we are doing in the 70s what we did in the 60s, the Cortina size of vehicle and the package that we're requiring in the same way that we led the industry in thinking in the 60s, we are doing it now with the new Cortina in the 70s. So you're really saying that the Cortina is going to be a follow that car for the opposition? Without question. Do you think this Cortina will reach the million? Unquestionably, and it'll do it a damn sight earlier than the Mark II or the Mark I. How can you be so confident? Because we've built everything into it that market research, that our experience with the Cortina range has taught us is wanted by the customer. Can I ask you just for one minute to step out of the role of salesman and to imagine yourself a customer? Why would you personally buy the new Cortina? Well, as a family man with three largish teenage children, I'm looking for, first of all, room inside the motor car. Now, this gives me ample room. Uh, we take our holidays fishing up in Yorkshire. Uh, we play golf while we're on holiday, boys and I. Uh, and so I'm looking for a large boot. I can put the golf clubs in and the fishing tackle and all the bags that mum and our daughter needs and so on. I've got the performance. It's quiet from a safety angle, for example, in terms of road holding. Uh, it's absolutely first class. And to get all these things, I haven't had to go to a staid old-fashioned motor car. I've got something that looks stylish uh, and looks as if it performs, as well as actually performing. The performance is exciting, though some people can take things too seriously. But this Cortina is a car that adds a new dimension to everyday motoring. The kind of car you'll feel you've enjoyed driving, even if you've only been shopping. Above all, the Cortina is the right car for a family. Not only because of the practical advantages, but because every family man wants the confidence of knowing that real safety has been engineered into the car that will carry his children. But at holiday time, the real question for a family saloon is always how much will it carry? 
If you're like me, there's no such thing as a beautifully matched set of luggage for a wife and two small children. Instead, I've always got to find somewhere to carry all the awkward things. There's a superb amount of usable room in the new Cortina boot. The well thought out shape makes the most of available luggage space and there's no sill to get in the way when you're loading. I find 12 cubic feet is more than enough to cope with all the difficult odds and ends that a family like mine insist on taking. No more arguments about what will have to be left behind. With this car, there's a comfortable feeling that everything will fit in. The secret of the big boot is in the new style of the Cortina. The waistline of the body sweeps up at the rear, keeping the smooth sculptured shape and providing space for the luggage without affecting the low modern roofline. The result is a practical, attractive car. The new Cortina is the result of years of Ford experience in providing for the needs of the family and it will undoubtedly prove to be the best-mannered, best-bred family car ever to come onto the British market. Incidentally, they say that a man who opens the door for his wife has either a new car or a new wife. Well, that's packed my little lot in. You'll have gathered that my luggage isn't like the ones you see in the adverts, or my family. But anyway, we've got the teddy bears in, we've got the golf clubs, we've got the racing car. And if you don't happen to carry those things, but you have a bigger family, you can pack those in as well. Even with five children in the back, you can drive in a more or less relaxed fashion, safe in the knowledge that they're kept in the four-door Cortina with childproof safety locks. But of course, if you're one of those families with a ginormous amount of luggage and lots and lots of children, or if you're one of those people with a quaint hobby like piano removing, or if you're simply a businessman who needs to carry 64 cubic feet of stock, then the car you should be looking at is the new Cortina estate car. It's the kind of car that fits in wherever there's a real job of work to be done. For the family man or the farmer, tourist or travelling salesman, 64 cubic feet is more than enough to deal with even the most demanding loads. And with a full range of engines to choose from, there's a guarantee that this trendy workhorse will provide a new peak of satisfaction for the driver who wants a car that really delivers the goods. The new Cortina is the car that will keep pace with the demands of the 70s. For the man who is always on the move, who demands performance and reliability, this car has a special appeal. A man like racing driver Frank Gardner, twice British saloon car champion, Frank Gardner knows better than most what it takes to engineer a safe, high-performance car. What does Frank think of the new Cortina? The main thing that strikes you with the car is it's, it's got such a solid look about it. It belies its weight. Not looking bulbous, but looking very strong and very safe. It's a nice, comfortable car. It's the sort of thing you expect out of Fords over the years where they 
through their racing they readily get something that you can sit into your feet automatically fall onto the essential controls like brakes the gear levers readily available it's a nice flexible wheel to grip hold of immediately a feel of confidence in the motor car as you step into it it's instruments are nice to look at their rev counters in the right sort of place uh, somebody's obviously thought about the light reflection which is a constant hazard in instrumentation you can look down and generally assess everything straight away at a glance it's where it ought to be well of course Frank one of the things we have learned from racing and rallying more than anything else you know you've been saloon guard champion twice so you've helped us is a suspension now the front is a double wishbone, which I know in racing you must be used to. And the back is four bar link, you know, uh, on a locating a rigid axle. How important is this suspension to the housewife? I should think it's the ideal suspension for a housewife. When your wife comes back, which mine does from time to time, with a, a bit of a mysterious wheel alignment problem where she's climbed a curb while thinking about the shopping list. It's so jolly robust, I think that'd be very hard pushed to bend it even the most malicious. What do you think about the steering? Well, rack and pinions are very precise steering and it's been proven with rallying and racing. It's got no particular downfalls at all and it's the nicest type of steering to drive. It's the most positive. Uh, this is a thing to have in a motor car. The engine is new on this car, Frank. This is the OHC engine. It's a two litre. Now, how does it feel for a start? Well, for a start, the most impressive thing about it is its low torque characteristic. It pulls the car away nice and smooth. You're apt to forget you have a four-speed gearbox. You pull the car away and you find yourself in top gear dawdling along and with no complaint from the engine, which is very nice for traffic motoring, especially city motoring. And then you have the advantage of the extra revs if you get out on the open highway. The level of noise is you and I are motoring along, conversations most audible, you're not conscious of, of listening to what somebody is saying, the ride seems particularly good. Uh, the reproduction of noise back through the car is very low. Are we going to see you racing a car like this in the not too distant future? I should think, Barry, when we had such success with Cortinas, which were just as heavy and a lot less horsepower, a, a car like this you must be in with a chance racing a thing like this in this day and age it has all the right requirements the suspension you're looking for the gear shifts you're looking for and has everything going for it i should think in the not too distant future we'll have these things at all kinds of attitudes to the road refinement that gives a look of prestige to the new Cortina. Refinement in style and in the hidden qualities of the engineering. She doesn't care that the seats have been ergonomically designed with extra legroom in the front. She just knows she's comfortable. She doesn't know that the new overhead camshaft engine with its five bearing crankshaft has been designed for smoothness and flexibility. The car just goes very nicely. She doesn't care that the wider track and new suspension have been designed to improve the handling and reduce vibration. She only knows it's a really smooth, sophisticated ride. She doesn't know that the bulkhead has been specially soundproofed and that the wiper motor and blower have been banished to the engine compartment. She only knows it's easier to hear the nice things he says in the new Cortina. The Cortina of the 70s offers a real choice to the customer who wants a truly personalised car. Choice of engines, choice of two doors, four doors or estate car, choice of trim on all models, Cortina Saloon, Cortina L, Cortina XL, Cortina GT and Cortina GXL with a wide range of personalised options. Is it any wonder that the new Cortina brings motoring to a new peak? <laughs>